of April 1995. After 92 years, this was the day Middlesbrough Football Club staged their final match at Essen Park. An historic occasion destined for a special place in the hearts of everyone who loved the borough. Some of the club's most famous names turned up to pay their last respects. But it was not just an emotional farewell. The final victory over Luton Town was to prove enough to claim the first division championship and promotion to the Premiership at the first attempt for new player boss Brian Robson. Farewell to Ayrson Park is a unique record of the day the borough gave their fans the perfect leaving party before the move to their new home, the Riverside Stadium. It was an occasion not to be missed. A full house was guaranteed and supporters arrived bright and early. What do you think of the new game? Fantastic. Step forward for Middlesbrough Football Club, definitely. And it's going to be Premier League football for Middlesbrough? Oh, no question, no question. <laughs> really? We'll win today, 2-0. Nobody's going to touch us. We've got the championship. That's ours. What's your first memories of Ayrson Park? Oh, too many. Have you got about an hour left? <laughs> <laughs> There was a warm reception for the Borough heroes of old who arrived on a special team coach. I remember when we played in 73-74 under Jack Charlton and we, we walked away with the second division at that time. And really the atmosphere around the club for the last month or so was, was really fantastic. A party atmosphere and hopefully it'll be the same today. April the 6th, 1974, and Ayrson Park salute the team that ended a 20-year exile from the first division. Jack Charlton's men have just rattled off their ninth win in a row. The second division title had already been guaranteed, with six games left. Big Jack had inherited most of his team from Stan Anderson. Charlton made them unstoppable, with Celtic's gifted Bobby Murdoch, his inspired key signing. Ayrson Park became a fortress, 20 home games without defeat, these were the days when the manager's wife worked in the club shop. The players who made up that team became the backbone of Borough's history. Right back John Craggs topped the loyalty list, with eight of them passing the 300 game mark, including his fullback partner Frank Spraggan. Striker John Hickton was a well established crowd favourite, and Holgate Enders really took to leading scorer Alan Foggan, a genuine North East character. Exciting youngsters made their mark too, like Livewire David Mills. David Armstrong began a quite astonishing run of playing every game for seven seasons. And Graham Souness, a Scottish midfielder rejected by Spurs, was on his way to world stardom. But in typical Charlton style, success was based on defence. Skipper Stuart Bohm was a man of granite. Cultured Willie Madrin, a perfect partner at the back. Irish keeper Jim Platt let in just 30 league goals. It all added up to Big Jack giving Ayrson Park its most successful team in 92 years of league football. Around 100 Borough old boys from seven different decades had made it to the Ayrson Park leaving party. The VIP marquee a real who's who of Middlesbrough's Hall of Fame. That was the dream from leaving school, play at Ayrson Park. You know, there was no wanting to go to Manchester United and things like that. The local clubs then was the main issue. Yeah, there's been some great times, you know. Obviously the playoffs against uh, Bradford City, Chelsea. I was fortunate to score goals in those games. Uh, the 4-1 game we beat Newcastle United. Uh, and then there was a semi-final which I scored and fortunately again it was against Aston Villa. It took us to Wembley for the first time in the club's history. So those are great memories. Slaven was a member of the team that won promotion less than a year after the borough almost went out of business. Ayrson Park looked to have staged its final game in 1986, when the official receiver moved in to shut the gates on Middlesbrough's football future. In the summer of 86, no one dared imagine the ground would celebrate scenes like these less than 12 months later. This man was the inspiration, Bruce Rioch. 
September 2nd, 1986, and possibly the most important cup tie in Borough history. Hartlepool in the Littlewoods Cup, and Ayrson Park was back in business. Fittingly, Borough celebrated with a fine goal by Stuart Ripley, one of the hardcore of young local talent, around which Rioch and Colin Todd rebuilt Teesside football. The new manager inherited a club that had slid into the third division for only the second time. They stayed just one season. The promotion celebrations had a deeper meaning after near extinction. But Rioch had created a driving force that wouldn't stop. On the pitch, he could rely on another all-time Borough great, Tony Mowbray. Mowbray was a player of true grit. Alongside him, a talent destined to be a star, Gary Pallister. The fans felt this was really their team, not big money buys. The players were fully developed, like top scorer Bernie Slaven. At £25,000, surely the Borough's best ever bargain. Home defeat by Leicester in the final home match gave Borough one of the worst days with automatic promotion snatched away. Yet this team's spirit was to win through. The playoffs gave Teesside unforgettable drama and first division status once again. This time it really was the final league match at Ayrson Park. A day for the men who made Borough history to bid a fond farewell to the famous old stadium. Some had said goodbye a few weeks earlier. Brian Clough missed the final day at Ayrson Park. He made his final visit 12 weeks before the end of the season. The launch of his new book coincided with the club's celebration of George Hardwick's 75th birthday. Thanks, Thanks for looking after me when I was a villain. I will. You're welcome. In his playing days, Clough scored 204 goals for Borough in just 222 games. Now, well into retirement, Clough still hasn't lost his touch in front of the cameras. Wolf used to do this pitch. Brian, was it was it a special? Was it a special? When I'm talking, man. One of the arts have been interviewed, or been an interviewer is just delay after you've asked the question, and then you get a lot of answers. Okay, all right, and relax, man. Right. How old are you? I'm 27. Mm, you look older. <laughs> well, thanks, man. You look younger. Yeah, thanks, thanks very much. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so, only kidding. This was your hometown club, of course. No, was it? Was it special? Was it special for you to play play all these games for your hometown club? Was, was it special, what? Was it a special time for you playing for your hometown club? Well, it was the only thing I could do. It was either that or being a messenger boy in the ICI, and I wasn't too keen on that. And I wasn't. I couldn't read very well in those days. To be fair, I'm not too clever now. Um, and I couldn't deliver letters, messenger boys, so I thought, well, God gave me some talent, I might as well try and play football. Great. And how would you describe that? I mean, that, that's the whole gate. You, you've probably ran to that a few times in your, in, your, in your time here. How would you describe the feeling of scoring from the whole gate? Um, same feeling as I got wherever I scored. One of elation. Right. And one of pleasure. Good. And one of having... Um, the used phrase is nowadays called job satisfaction. Now, I didn't know what that meant in my bloody day, but my day was sticking the ball in the net. And I assumed I got job satisfaction. Great. Okay. And I did it more than most people. And you, you scored quite a few goals for Middlesbrough in those days, but and, and maybe uh, a lot of people think you, you should have won more caps than the two that you did for England. Yeah. Is that a I, w I, I, I wish they'd have been working for the Football Association. I would have won more. You, do you feel maybe that you were perhaps a little bit too controversial and maybe that, that held you back in play? I wasn't controversial at all. I was just a wee bit different to them. Outspoken, maybe? It, well, I wasn't too outspoken, actually. But uh, I was a wee bit different mm -hmm. to them. When you, when you look back at your Middlesbrough days, I mean, there was a lot of goals and it. it was a great team. I mean, I'm sure, sure uh, you, you could name a lot of the players that you played alongside there. You don't need any reminder the likes of Halliday, Day, Peacock. Well, Lindy Delapena comes straight to mind because I used to work with Lindy, uh, Euglini, uh, Roland Euglini, and uh, Dickie Robinson was centre half when I first started. Uh, and you can keep going and going. When I started to get on a wee bit, it was Alan Peacock, Derek McLean, Billy Day, Holiday on the left. He was an absolute bloody rake from Barnsley. Still is, actually. But nice with it. He got away with it. And good player, actually. Thank <laughs> you.
One of the old boys who did make the final day at Ayrson Park was Cluffy's old striking partner, Alan Peacock. Peacock, a player who spent his entire career in the second division, but still managed to get an England call-up for the 1962 World Cup. I always felt that we were, uh, we didn't seem to have any luck at Ayrson, and I think that's gone right through the years, and I'm hoping that the new stadium brings us good luck and we'll go through that. What's your first memories there of playing at Ayrson Park? You must have some regret about it as well. Playing, playing here. Um, just the characters that were in the team at the time. I was only 17 year old and I was playing the likes of Lolando, Ugolini, all these absolutely marvellous, terrific, terrific characters. And that's what I'll miss about the game. You know, and, uh, but I'm sure that we'll go on from the new stadium and these players will all come again. They'll all come back to the new stadium. I hope so anyway, because it's a final get together for this uh, stadium. And I hope that we're going to have a, a same turnout probably when we get in the new stadium. I'd, I'd like to see them all together again. Lovely. For us, two most famous names played in the same team and they've been hard to separate ever since. Fullback George Hardwick, an England captain, and Quicksilver centre forward Wilf Mannion. The two Borough stars always seem to be spoken of in the same breath, even after their playing days had finished. But their careers went in different directions, with only Hardwick opting for management. Borough fans of all generations held them in such esteem. That public demand saw Hardwick and Mannion in a long overdue testimonial in May 1983. Few will argue that history will dub them the kings of Ayrson Park. What's your first memories there of Ayrson Park? Oh, that's simple. My first game for the first team, first division of football in the way, against Milton Wanderers. My first kick, I put in my own net. <laughs> Three minutes from kickoff, I scored in my own goal. And how can you get a better, a better start than that? <laughs> it, it was. Uh, Unfortunately, uh, I guess with being young and having so many brilliant players around me, it didn't didn't make any difference except for the last one nil. <laughs> uh, but I I, I love this. I, I kept, as I say, I kept the team for from 1946 to 51. Uh, we we played to entertain. We had a, a brilliant footballing side. We drew record gates wherever we went. And yet we had nothing to show for it, apart from the satisfaction of having uh, always between 35 and 50,000 gates. And, and the, the, uh, the, the sheer pleasure of playing football at Ayrson Park with the appreciation we got from the, from the crowds, this, I wouldn't have choose, chosen to play any place else. This now, is all I want to do is do it all over again. <laughs> give, us, give us some of the names that you played with at your time in the 30s. Oh, in the 30s, uh, Bushby, Matt Bushby, um, Stan, Stan Matthews, T Tommy Finney, Tommy Lawton, Frank Swift, Harry Ebbs, all the cream. All Some the, fantastic all players the, there. That, just, they were spoiled for choice. That's what I'm saying. If you didn't play well, you were out. As I said, each position was covered over four times. Each, each position was for, uh, four times. And if you didn't play well, you were out. What do you think of Brian Robson's team now? Does it rank anywhere in those players? Oh, no, 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 no. No, the, the, in the day's football, it's, uh, it's all systems, nearly all, all systems, and natural players could, uh, could never play through really these systems. It had to be done off the cuff. You have to, had to be a brilliant player when he hadn't the ball. You couldn't play systems at all. And Millsburg can expect you at the first home game at the new ground? Of course, I'll be there, yeah. <laughs> I wish I had 14 year old legs though. <laughs> How old are you now? Uh, I'm 77 next month. And still looking very 16. good, I must say. Okay, thanks very much. Thank you very Thanks. much. Out on the pitch, the pre match watering of the playing surface produced one of the afternoon's lighter moments. 70 skipper Stuart Bohm was given a real surprise during a live television interview. Well, with me now, the captain of that great side of the 70s, Stuart Bohm. A man largely responsible for making this fortress Ayrson Park. Great memories of that time. Very kind of you to say that, yeah, but... Uh... <laughs>
I think we're getting sprayed we're getting water We're absolutely moment. soaked here. This wasn't the best place to stand. Sorry about that, Stuart. It's all right, but uh, <laughs> it's really nice to be back here again. And I feel a bit tearful about the old stadium coming down because we had some magnificent times here. And it's nice to see the old lads again, John Hickton, John Craggs. David Mills. I've met them all in the last 10 minutes and I haven't seen them for 15 years, so it's really good to be back and I'm glad Middlesbrough are doing so well. Middlesbrough's first ever match at Ayrston Park was in September 1903, a 1-0 win over Glasgow Celtic. The North Stand must have been a magnificent sight when Borough moved in and it served the club well down the ages. Borough were thinking big when they paid £1,000 for Alf Common, a football landmark in the transfer market. Tim Williamson was a goalkeeper on the first day at Ayrsham. His 610 appearances are still a club record. The goals of George Campbell dominated the late 20s and 30s as the club suffered a series of promotions and relegations. In 1954, Ayrsham Park staged an epic amateur cup final second replay when Crook beat Bishop Auckland. The home fans had little to celebrate that season with relegation and the start of a 20-year exile from the top flight. The ground had a refit in the 60s. The extra work proved timely when it pipped St James's Park to become a venue for the 1966 World Cup. Ironically, the year the club dropped into Division 3 for the first time. That was a one-season nightmare. Borough bounced back at the first attempt. Good reason to celebrate. Three decades on and Borough will begin life at their brand new stadium in the Premiership. Home for the next millennium, a state-of-the-art stadium at Millhaven on the banks of the Tees. A distinct horseshoe design. 32,000 will be the capacity and £16 million is the cost of the largest new ground in the country. Work began in October 94. Brian Robson and George Hardwick presided over the groundbreaking ceremony, then in step Taylor Woodrow construction. Their task to build a new stadium fit for the next century in less than 10 months. Borough's fans have flocked to the visitor centre, making regular checks on the ground's progress. Well, it's very exciting and all time I've been coming to see Middlesbrough. I couldn't believe it when the news was announced and it's, uh, it's just so exciting. Can't wait till next season. Are the plans you've seen what you expected? Uh, better than expected, if anything. Better than expected. It's uh, very, very impressive, the size and the design of the stadium. It's a very sort of attractive design. Can't wait. <laughs> very impressive. It just like gives you a glow in your heart to actually look at it and think we'll be there next season. Hopefully it's going to be the start of a new era for the club and we can actually go on and win something. Fingers crossed. Can't wait for this new stand and you know all the excitement that goes with it and I just hope we get the success you know that we that all the borough fans deserve so long awaited you know that should be good for the development in this area won't it from being like a completely derelict area like especially when they're bringing all the training pitches on all that around the dock it'll make it uh, a decent area the 132 acre site provided by the Teesside Development Corporation has been transformed and Borough are on the way to a new home boasting some of the best equipped facilities of any football ground in Britain. The name for the new stadium was unveiled at the final day at Ayrson Park. Here we go, with the naming of the new stadium being next players are ready to tear up the squares here and reveal the name in five, four, three, It was nearly time for Brian Robson and his side to take the stage. The question was how would the champions elect cope with the expectation? But first there was one more pre-match ceremony.
unique day celebrating Borough's past, but from now on, this afternoon, is all about the future. Can Brian Robson complete a magnificent start in football management by leading Borough into a new league as well as a new stadium? We've had a superb hors d'oeuvre. Now it's time for the main course. And what a fantastic reception. These supporters have been wound up all afternoon. They've been here an hour, an hour and a half, most of them, waiting to get their heroes onto the field. Great scenes and everything to play for. The manager's presence on the pitch is absolutely vital, of course. Robson's recurring calf problem has confined him to the dugout for the last four games, but his drive and inspirational qualities never more needed. In fact, it's a full-strength Borough side, with the exception of Robbie Musto, who's still out. Defence is back to normal, with skipper Nigel Pearson recovered from concussion, with Derek White back from suspension, assistant manager Viv Anderson and Chris Morris stand down, Graham Cavanagh loses out to the manager, two strikers on the bench, Fuchs and Moreno, attack the name of the game. So, the scheduled last league game at Essen Park is underway and Borough fans hoping so much they do not have to return here for the agony and perhaps the ecstasy of the playoffs. The destiny in their own hands win the last two games today and at Tranmere next Sunday and they're up, they're champions. They've only won the... Division 2, as it were, championship three times, 27-29, and that famous 74 team, which the man alongside me knows all about. And how they love to sign off from Ayrson Park with genuine silverware. Luton Town, according to their manager David Pleat, have gone to sleep since they reached 51 points, which he considered the safety margin. They're without an away win so far this year in the league but they have won seven and drawn seven and lost eight, which is not a bad away record. They're 16th in the division, 13 points clear of the relegation cut-off, and that represents a comfortable position indeed for them. They'll be relaxed, they'll be looking to enjoy the occasion, and they'll be looking to spoil the party. For Borough, the start so important. Alan Miller, who's been a rock himself, lifting that one forward. Luton look very much a team who can really play if you let them and I'm sure Borough will be swarming all over the midfield to try and compress the game keep Luton back in their place and really get a grip on this last league fixture after 92 years of football Alan Moore, one of the youngsters out there today Leonardo Fjortoft bothering to chase that one which the experienced Trevor Peake booted clear the players will be so pleased to just get this game underway but that's Gary Waddock being challenged there by Jamie Pollock illegally there'll be plenty of that out there one suspects yes it'll be very competitive and uh, that's only to be expected there's a lot at stake particularly for Middlesbrough but Luton will come and play and Middlesbrough might quite enjoy that they always seem to prefer to play against a side that allows them to play as well but as you quite rightly said Robson and Pollock in particular will be biting in midfield Turned on first time by Scott Oakes, and with any great sense of direction. Scored that second goal that knocked Newcastle out of the cup last season when David Pleat's team really showed what they can do on their day. As the saying goes, they just don't have enough days. Alan Miller, who was not in goal when Borough conceded five at Kenilworth Road. ready to attack this one and not particularly challenged there by Fjortov. White or Moore put the challenge in from Paul Telfer. It's a borough ball. Derek White after suspension with the throw in. Cut out by Linton. Moore's picked it up though. Here's John Hendry. Square for Robson. He got a bit tangled up and Waddock took the ball off him. Pollock Vickers, Pearson for Cox, Pollock, Yortoft, 
bit of a wrestling match with Marvin Johnson. That'll be a physical scrap. And certainly Fjortoft enjoys backing into defenders and really letting them know he's around. Cox poised with the free kick. Fjortoft just pointing as to where he like it. Peak's picking him up at the moment. It's pulled out back and Alan Moore has to check to try and keep it going. White made too much of that free kick to be honest well I don't think it was intended that's for sure Brian Robson was signal signalling to drop it into Fjortov there was space there and I'm sure that uh, Neil Cox pulled that one way way behind where he intended it to go that's the sign of an understandable touch of nerves They're looking to generate some pace and some zip pretty quickly which is a, a style that Middlesbrough are more comfortable with Pearson playing that one up towards our gantry Pearson who had concussion last 10 weeks in September through to November skipper back there today it's Marshall and that's Pollock hooking it forward Henry and Peak. Fjortov just dropped off a little bit that's a nice little touch and then a really great ball to Alan Moore just couldn't bring it down, but Fjortov knew exactly what he wanted to do with that one, and he knew that Moore would give him an option. That was good thinking from Fjortov. Moore couldn't quite capitalise. Well, when he flicks it up here, it's a great left-footed volley across the field, spreading the play. Alan Moore takes it well, knocks it in front of him, just slips slightly then, probably just takes it to one side rather than straight ahead of him on his left-hand side. But I must admit, when Fjortov first flicked it up, I thought, well, he'll just play a little simple ball into Robson here, and he, he unleashed that left-foot volley there, which certainly opened the play. Exactly a shrinking violet, uh, Fjortov. Uh, he likes to put on a show self-possessed international footballer below we'll get some real distance on this the pitch considering the wear it's had in excellent condition here's Hendry now giving it a chase Hendry's got away penalty is it no way referee waves play on Mr Baines looked as though he was checking across to the linesman Booze from the crowd there. Definitely inside, I thought for a moment he might be checking to make sure the tackle was actually inside. Well, Hendry gets through here from the from the long kick. It's knocked down. Eventually Robson competes for it. It's knocked forward and Hendry through sheer persistence gets goal side I thought he was looking for the tackle I thought he could have gone on there but it looked as though he got his heels clipped the only thing against it was he didn't get too much of a reaction from the Middlesbrough players well that one skipped through to Dwight Marshall and Marshall Marshall being challenged there all the way by White and that is quite inspirational defending Superbly read by White. Talk about determination to win that one. Heartbeats a little higher than normal, you think, out there, David? Just a little bit, I think, yeah. A little bit of tension and anxiousness. But, I mean, in fairness, that was an absolutely magnificent recovery from Derek White. I mean, super tackle. But now it's Hendry. Hendry looking for the cross, Fjortoft is there, brings it down, Fjortoft into the middle, oh, Pollock needed a touch, and it just ran on, and Priest can get it away, Fjortoft looking to lay the chance on a plate, Borough couldn't cash in, Fjortoft though causing problems. Robson turning into that one, and that was Pollock, and Mr Vane's pulling that one back. Real chance though, David. Yeah, John Hendry crossing to the far post. Fjortov doing well, controlling it well with the outside of his right foot, sensibly cutting the ball back. And then Pollock, I think, thought somebody was coming in behind him and decided to leave it when he might have been as well just having a flash at it. Fjortov again bringing it down and knocking it through very intelligently indeed for Alan Moore. Blackmore is in the middle as well got a deflection and that's a corner Fjortov really thinking and really distributing the ball very imaginatively Moore making 
his way to the centre. We have Blackmore as another corner kick specialist, and they're all forward. Fjortov right in there, didn't reach Pearson. It was Luton Town's number nine, John Taylor, who knocked it away. Taylor right back there trying to get the goal side of Pearson. Looking for the near post knock on. Blackmore again. He got it there. Off the line, it was Robson's header. Robson so close to giving Borough the lead. Richard Harvey was the defender. Along with Waddock on the line. Borough really going close there. Well, the corner comes across here. Pearson gets the flick on and Robson attacking the ball. Has to make contact from the standing jump. The clock's bursting through there. Just leave that replay maybe for a little later with Barra pouring forward now. This is Alan Moore. Moore can't get through two of them. Barra really getting up ahead of steam. Blackmore's corner kicks then proving a real threat to Luton. Middlesbrough settling rather more and starting to cause one or two problems. Pickles found it out there. This is John Taylor. Taylor looking down to go himself perhaps. Pickles in with a challenge. Taylor trying to turn again, did well to find Telfer, Marshall tries to turn, again, excellent defending, this time by Pearson, White, Vickers, that's a defence that's really built up an understanding there. Forward now for Fjortoft. Fjortoft again looking to release Moore, who was checked there by Linton, Moore really scrapping for it, Pete the defending, but here's Hendry, Hendry, and the keeper, young... Kelvin Davis stood his ground and blocked Hendry nearly in there. Well, they've had a couple of half chances, haven't they, Middlesbrough? Alan Moore doing well there, battling, forcing the defender into the back pass. Hendry onto it quickly. I thought Hendry might just have dropped the shoulder and taken it round in there rather than playing it, trying to play past the keeper. Again, Fjortoft backing in. And this time he gets his free kick. It's Marvin Johnson who's penalised. This is a really useful position as well. Fjortoft may well work on the principle that the more you're in there challenging, you're going to get one or two go your way. And he really has looked a handful. Goal scoring speaks for itself. Robson is there, Blackmore is there, Cox, Moore, will have a go. Moore looks as though he fancies it, or it could be Blackmore. Kelvin Davis, Blackmore drifting it in there, getting it on target, maybe not quite the punch that it might have needed to really fly past the keeper. Pearson, Vickers all up there, Blackmore's corner towards Pearson, he got a knock on there, Fjortov to scrap forth the line again and it was Robson in there once more they've got a penalty it's a penalty to Middlesbrough Let's sort out what happened well the ball comes across again Pearson gets the flick good header back by Fjortoff the head's going it's kicked off the line it happened so quickly it's headed back in again I honestly didn't see the handball it was very very insignificant in fact, I think everybody's missed it. A little pat on the cheek there. I don't know whether that offence happened when Robson was in there challenging. I don't think so. It came out again. Real pressure, though, on Neil Cox with the penalty. Cox for 1-0. Good save! The follow-up and... Kelvin Davis denies Borough and still they're looking for a breakthrough. The teenage keeper pulling out the stops. Cox, real disappointment.
anxiety, concern, over-trying, frustration, or mental attitudes that can undermine a team. But Borough are boiling at the moment and really pouring in on Luton, but it just won't go in for them. They've just got to make sure that they don't force the issue too much. They've got to be patient. There's plenty of time left. They haven't got to get it in their minds that it's going to be one of those days when things aren't going to go for them. They've just got to concentrate, keep playing the way they are, keep getting the ball in the box and attacking players. Drags down, though, as Priest bursts through, and Miller forced to pull out the save. That's always the warning. The push forward, the think about the attacks, and then Luton, who can play their football, break and cause something. Well, it's little Priest here making the run from the left-hand side. Does well, strikes it well with his right foot, which isn't his best foot, thankfully, in that position. And uh, Alan Miller there made a good save, although it was going to be a spectacular shot from that angle and that distance to, meet, to beat Alan Miller. Her appeals to the offside then. Corner taken short. Square for Harvey. Thought about blasting it, and they still do. Plays it out wide again. Way solidly by Robson. Taylor, Pearson there, Greece picks up the loose ball and keeps control and knocks it square for Telfer, Miller right behind that one, good technique, down on his knees, the whole body behind it, good fielding, cricket style, bowled out as well to Clayton Blackmore, the run from Hendry, Fjortoft in the middle, plenty of white shirts there though, Back for Pollock, Fjortov wants it played in, good first touch, Fjortov the turn, and Davis didn't quite gather that so cleanly, but what a good take, and what a quick turn and shot there from Janaga Fjortov. The win today would take Borough five points clear of Reading, six clear of Bolton, we have got two to play. Barra currently four points ahead of Tranmere. Overcomes his free kick. Pearson with a header on. Hendry prepared to run for it. Hendry into the middle. Again, Luton getting plenty of bodies in the way, and it really matters. Hendry making some good diagonal runs. He's going to try and take defenders with him. Creates some room for Fjortoft the midfield players, especially Robson, who've been quick to arrive. Blackmore with a corner kick. Again, the ball bobbling around. Again, it's hacked away. Marshall that time. Blackmore knocks it in. Keeper stayed where he was. Away to Moore. Moore can hit it on the left foot. Moore into the middle. Robson sliding in. Corner kick. And Moore, when he drifts out wide and opens up space onto that left foot, can really hit them. Robson, though, was in the middle, and he's really pushed on and got into advanced positions today. Borough corner to the last minute of the first half. Only half away. Hendry was challenging. Pearson scrapping as well. Hendry opening up room. And it's a goal! Middlesbrough have taken the lead. Hendry shot, and Ayrson Park erupts right on the stroke of half-time and Barra, who've been pushing and pushing, have got the breakthrough. John Hendry! Well, Hendry does well here. The ball comes out to him, he runs across the goal and he takes a deflection. His shot here deflects off Marshall, I think it is, back there in a defensive position. Unfortunate for Luton, unfortunate for the goalkeeper but a little bit of good fortune for Middlesbrough, which is probably no more than they deserve, because they've not had the best of luck in situations earlier. Looping shot there over the top of the goalkeeper. John Henry will be delighted with that, I'm sure. This is 16th of the season, got a deflection, but I'm sure there's no doubt Henry will go into the record books on this last day as getting the breakthrough. 1-0 the Borough. And here comes Alan Moore. Fjortoft, oh, what a chance! Fjortoft could have buried that one. He can't believe it. And Luton in danger of falling off the edge of the earth. 
Well, there's not a great deal you can say about this. Alan Moore does really well there, heads it down, he bounces up, and Fjortov, nine times out of ten, would put those away. Roberts header, Harvey forward, Cox was in there, Hendry, Hendry again, Cox looking to push on, Johnson, good work there, Pearson, a bad bit of danger control from the big man, but he just worked on it a little bit too long, and now Luton have got the ball back, Marshall trying to get round the back again, but there's Pearson, and uh, Priest I think had a bit of a think about that challenge, saw Pearson take off and launching himself at the ball and said that looks yours to me as well well once Nigel Pearson got elected to do that he was always going to be second favourite Priest wasn't he and I think it was a question of uh, discretion being the better I think it was going to be Pearson's ball and yeah. Priest had got it Marshall touch off there for Oakes in Pollock challenging Marshall though a bit lively on the ball when he gets the chance of bringing that foul out of Brian Robson. Now the free kick from an interesting position. The problem they've got at the moment with us is that they're playing five in midfield. Luton Marshall's dropping off to make a midfield five with Telfer or to Warwick and Priest giving them an extra man in there. And Middlesbrough are not sure whether to push anybody in from the back or not. And of course, this little interchange of position and this fluency they have Luton from midfield is causing Middlesbrough problems. A few men square for anything touched down, but it's lifted in towards Taylor. It's goal. Equaliser. They're appealing the borough players, but it's in from John Taylor. That's 1-1. Disaster for the borough, but Luton caught them napping with the dead ball kick. chances to cash in are all ahead of them but they've got to get that lead back 1-1 here against Luton Town Fjortoft flags up John Henry one of the anxious people in this ground and I'm sure one of them is the former Middlesbrough skipper Tony Mowbray well Tony they've got to uh, really get back into their stride now Middlesbrough Yes, Roger. Um, they'll be looking for the, the real strong characters, I think, on the field. Looking at uh, Nigel Pearson there, Brian Robson. The need, the need to get about the players and, and we need another surge, uh, a big push. Uh, there's danger of the, there we go, the crowd getting behind them now. And that's what they need. They need to lift it again. It's got a bit flat for them. They need a big surge and, and see if they can get that second goal. Thank you, Tony. Made a bit of the old uh, Mowbray spirit, dare I say it. Uh, they've got one or two chips off the Mowbray block as it were out there in the Borough team and some uh, hard and determined pros out there but they've also got to keep cool Well, the news for the Hawthorns, it's certainly all happening down there. In 68 minutes, John Aldridge pulled Tranmere back to 2-1. And a minute later, a second goal for Lee Ashurst makes it West Brom 3, Tranmere 1. Three goals then in six minutes down at the Hawthorns. Two of them for Lee Ashcroft, one for Aldridge. 3-1 West Brom leading Tranmere. Here at Ayrson Park on this last league match. 1-1, Borough Luton. Taylor, the man who got the equaliser, now in possession. And that one cut out, an important interception too by Steve Vickers. And as Tony Mowbray was just saying a minute or two ago, they need a lift, they need a pick-up, they need a bit of spark. They do, that's right. I mean, the effort is there, it's just a little bit misguided at the moment. I don't think you can fault the team in terms of effort and commitment, but they're just allowing Luton to dictate the play now. As I say, they're playing four at the back and they're only pushing Taylor up front. They've got to have the, the mental courage now to maybe just push on and take the game. And as Tony Mowbray said, surge, but they've got to do it in a competitive and composed way. to Hendry, Fjortov, Hendry through, Hendry, a 
It's another excellent save from Kelvin Davis. And another chance that Middlesbrough don't convert. 18-year-old Davis standing his ground again. Well, John Henry certainly got free then. Got the first one-on-one -on -one we've had. And Davis has certainly done his bit to make Borough go all the way if they want to win this First Division Championship. More. A little bit over-deliberate, if anything, Borough at the moment. A little bit of inhibition into the play now that wasn't there earlier. Robson, nothing inhibited about him, surely. More. he can win a game. Pollock, he's the sort of person they'll look to to really push on. Bursting through the men there, and White supporting as well, and still with White, and Hendry, goal, Burr, John Hendry, Hendry second, and Middlesbrough back in charge, John Hendry, who's done so much over the years, puts the smile back on the Middlesbrough supporters. And they can't stop celebrating down there. Well, terrific positive run here from Pollock. He goes through, he's fouled there. The referee, in fairness, allows advantage. Derek White does terrific here. Keeps his composure, cuts it back. John Henry, one touch control, and then just clips it into the corner. Full credit to Derek White here, who does brilliant. Fjortoft first, Fjortoft, corner kick, to complete the story, Lee Ashcroft has got a hat-trick for West Brom, a 71st minute penalty, it's now West Brom 4, Tranmere 1, Tranmere are falling, they started this game four points behind the Borough with a game in hand, and now it's Borough who are leading, and it's Tranmere who are struggling. moment through for Robson Davis is there again Fox now Hendry again Hendry into the middle looking for Cox Jeremy Pollock there for a moment. Peak. Crease. Well held Miller. Just when our keeper needs to be reliable. 16 clean sheets in 39 league games before today. Robson, considering his own future in a playing sense this week. On well, the ball's out of play, David. Your man of the match, please. Well, there's been a couple of great performances, but I've actually given it to Derek White. I think he's been inspirational this afternoon, both defensively and, of course, in laying on that second goal for John Henry, which is unusual to see Derek up there on the, on the dead ball line in the opposition penalty area. I remember early days of the first half he made that quite sensational chase back and tackle and that really set his stall out Derek White who started the season having to battle his way into the team but has come in at left back and looked mightily assured on 
and around Tranmere Rovers this afternoon. Lady score from the Hawthorns. It's 5-1 to West Brom now. West Brom 5, Tranmere 1. And maybe they'll be relieved it's not on goal difference in this league if it gets a bit tight at the end. But Taylor getting the fifth goal there for West Bromwich Albion. 2-1 here for a lead. Now they could really wrap it up here. Fjortoft is in the middle. Hendry has to deliver. Fjortoft is just a bit too far, but Hendry, in fairness to him, had to bend it round the defender well as well. And it was a fine angle to bisect. Fjortoft would have loved to have wrapped it all up there. He's drifted over Cox, that one. Into the final minute, well into it. Barra need to hang on. Linton, Robson good positioning and so calm to play it out for Alan Moore Moore and now here's Hendry could it be a hat-trick for Hendry Hendry Fjortoft oh he's put it wide Fjortoft Fjortoft could have had a couple himself today and Hendry that time wanted to be the provider Pollock now has got the ball. Only two minutes of stoppage time. Well, Ayrson yes, Park has seen eight promotions and eight relegations over the years. And the whistle's gone. Borough on their way by taking another major step to another promotion, perhaps. It's been the day that started by looking back but has ended with the sights very firmly set on the future thanks to John Hendry up the borough is the message there and thanks to two goals from John Hendry borough still heading in the right direction and some of the supporters have come on the pitch in their exuberance Pearson there the skipper individual celebrations going around and I think many of the crowd want the fans to go off so they can play their own tribute to the Middlesbrough players the mood is certainly high players getting cheered off the pitch Robson there right in the middle of it all and he's asking them to go back and I think he was quite prepared to acknowledge the applause of the crowd but Robson's message this week has been we will not be celebrating until we have something definite to celebrate Robson playing the diplomat there in encouraging the players to get the fans off the pitch on well, a day when everything has gone so right for them on the pitch in an incident filled game it's a pity we've had one or two of these over-enthusiastic fans come on to celebrate and I think everybody was looking for the set piece to end with a little bit more sense of theatre Robson mobbed by the supporters who've really worshipped what he's done here the lift he gave the club when he came here and the influence he's had on the team Brian Robson is the cry from the crowd. It's ended here 2-1 to Middlesbrough in this vital game. Let's go down and hear from the man himself, Brian Robson with Ian Payne. Brian Robson, congratulations, what a fantastic way to finish off here at Essen Park. Yeah, delight. it was a hard day. And the lads really put it in. Really put it in and played everything. Tremendous performance, it could have been 5-1. The reason I mentioned that scoreline is you might be pleased to know that West Brom have beaten Tranmere by five goals to one. We like to, we like to make it hard for ourselves. <laughs> Keeps everybody on the toes. So really it, it is down to yourselves now. Only yourselves and Bolton can win this championship. We said that all the time, it's, it was up to us. Uh, but we've still got a bit of work to do yet. As you say, I don't know if you have there, Tranmere have lost 5-1 this afternoon, so it's all to play well, that's for. That's right, but this was the main result. The lads did their own business and you know we, we need to do that next week as well. It's been a tremendous atmosphere here all afternoon. What a send-off. Cheers. Very good. Okay, thanks Brian. John Hendry, the man who scored the two goals.
fantastic match for you. Yeah, I mean, the crowd are coming out in the force today. And uh, it was a bit emotional. I mean, uh, going to new ground and what have you. But uh, this is the best atmosphere I've played in at Ayrson Park. It was fantastic. A fantastic final match here. The fans, I mean, what can you say about them? Absolutely. Magnificent. Just look at them now. And uh, hopefully we can get the point we need. It's not over yet. There's still a bit of work to be done. Are you confident you'll be in the Premiership next season, John? I'll tell you next Saturday, next Sunday. Thanks very much, John. Okay. Cheers. Well, you can see the players have come back to take the applause. They were very coy indeed about taking the uh, salute without it all being wrapped up, but they've taken such an important step forward. The man of the match is Derek White. And you can see it being presented to him. Derek White, congratulations. Man of the match this afternoon, presented by Bill Corcoran eventually. A tremendous afternoon. Yeah, tremendous. It's always going to be difficult for us. There's so much pressure on the boys to perform. I, thought we, I don't think they had much chances, really. I thought it played very well. Um, I'm just delighted I made a contribution for John's goal. Um, so it's great, a great day for everybody here. Thanks very much, Derek. Yes. It was the perfect end to a perfect day. Victory in Borough's final match at Ayrson Park turned out to be all they needed to secure the First Division Championship. The season's final game at Chamonix Rovers proved not to be important in the race to join the Premiership. Borough had a bright new future and a brand new home to look forward to. Plenty of reason to celebrate.